I'd like to introduce you to John O'Many, who is our historian, who knows all about it, and yet he has a few words to say there for us. And the 3rd of January 1920 is a date forever etched in the history of Carrick Tool. In broader terms, it was also a significant date in the Irish War of Independence. Since the general election at the end of 1918 and the formation of Dáil in January 1919, the emphasis through most of 1919 was on fundraising and international diplomacy, promoting the legitimacy of an independent Irish state rather than military activity. There was, of course, during that period, many locally orchestrated military incidents throughout the country between IRA volunteer groups and local RIC forces, commencing with Solo Head Bay and the day the first oil set. By the end of 1919, however, the IRA GHQ in Dublin was prepared to move to a more military stage in its war and to commence this gave its blessing for three RIC barracks in Cork, number one brigade district to be captured. These attacks were organized to occur simultaneously on Saturday night, the 3rd of January, 1920. The attack on Ballygarvan never materialized and the Kilmory attack was repelled after a spirited battle. The Carrick Tool attack was, however, successful and thus the RIC station became the first in Ireland to be permanently decommissioned with the express approval of IRA GHQ during the War of Independence. In the circumstances, the events we commemorate here today can be legitimately viewed as the beginning of the military phase of the War of Independence, as hundreds of RIC barracks all around Ireland met a similar fate in the weeks and months that followed. This crucially cut off the flow of local intelligence to British military headquarters in Dublin. The Carrick Tool attack was carried out by the Cove and Middleton companies, led by Mick Leahy and Dermot Holder respectively, supported by Nagraha Company led by Martin Curry. The local company was not involved to avoid the risk of the plans being leaked to the authorities. It is only to be expected that the local landscape will have changed over the ensuing hundred years. The barrack, which was situated across the road and to the east at the, at the corner of Main Street and Well Lane, was never again used and eventually demolished. Ironically, the house which stood at the eastern end uh, at the eastern side of the, of the Well Lane entrance, known to locals as Jamie Wright's House, collapsed only in the last six months. <laughs> Thankfully, however, a key component of the original battle site remains intact today as it was 100 years ago. And our committee are extremely thankful to the proprietor and occupant, Mary Burchin, Lee Murphy, whose ancestors occupied the premises in 1920 for giving us permission to erect a commemorative plaque directly under the windows from which the first shots were fired at the beginning of the assault. In the changing landscape of, Tool, of Main Street Carrick Tool, it ensures that, our most, that one of our most significant events in local history is commemorated for future generations. Thanks, you Mary, for your kindness and cooperation. Lord Mayor and County Lord Mayor, uh, Mary Lynn and Tony, uh, to do the unveiling and maybe we'd like to uh, say uh, a few more things as well. Yes. Just to say uh, <clears throat> thank you very much uh, for the invite tonight, fellow councillors. Nice to see you here as well. And as Anthony mentioned, um, at this filling me in coming up about 100 years ago and the struggles that they went through, and I suppose similar to them, we've our own struggles today. Um, but look, hopefully, our county of Cork is a good at the moment anyway, hopefully we we'll stay that way and keep safe and keep well. But it's an honour as well for me to be here and Conor Nelligan as well is very important for me um, about the unveiling of the plaque and he has sent his apologies as Conor has been the first to all these events and it's all important to keep our heritage and our history of 
involved. So I commend everybody involved in getting this back. Um, and Cork County Council are always been there to help with all the systems. were shaking in fear when some raiders with arms came flocking in here they call on surrender no answer they got be garces their leader will fire on the spot cheer up jolly fellows don't die in despair for the rebels in carry your devils may care now the firing it started at Kate Murphy's shop Where Lizzie and Molly were ready to drop And Kate in the kitchen didn't know what to do She ran out in the yard without stocking her shoe She ran over the field, they'd any heart not to call For the honour of God, take me over the wall From that to Dick Flynn and she knocked on the door And there she remained till a quarter to four Cheer up, jolly fellows, don't die in despair, for the rebels in Carringer devils may care. The first came along that the raiders had seen, Johnny Power from the rock coming from Tulla Green. When asked by the raiders what he was doing there, he was courting the lassie with the dark curly hair. The raider he laughed with a wink in his eye I pity your case, my poor Irish boy It's no night for courting or neither for stroll So now if you please put your nose to the pole Cheer up, jolly fellows, don't die in despair For the rebels in carry and the devils may care now Johnny at Terry's, he got the great fright He was woke from his sleep in the middle of the night He called up to Miss Joe, and it was his delight For he slept on her sofa for the rest of the night Now patching the waxer, he went to the bog And a drain he fell in because of the fog A raider came on him with rifle in hand Saying, waxer, we'll shoot you if you're not going to stand Look here, mate, says Paddy, tis I'm in a fix I came down to the bog for a handful of sticks If you were out for shooting by the light of the moon The first shot you fire, let it be at Muldoon Cheer up, jolly fellows, don't die in despair For the rebels of carrying or the devils may care now the firing had started and lasted four hours Some bullets and bombs were gone in great showers Next came an explosion and jelly night and fuse And tried to resist but they found it no use When the hole it was blown it made a great space Where the peelers and raiders they stood face to face The bobby surrenders they had to give in They were tied up and handcuffed by some disguised men Cheer up, jolly fellows, don't die in despair, for the rebels in carrying their devils may care.